Hi class, how are you? I hope you are doing good. I am your ICT teacher, Jerry Lynn Bisuenya. Today, we will discuss our lessons for computer system servicing. Are you ready? Just sit back, relax, watch, and learn. Our first topic for this quarter is all about history of computers. Our learning competencies number one, manifest ability in relating computing devices in the evolution of computers. Under that is identify and differentiate the types of computing devices invented by men in calculating and processing of data. And describe earliest computing devices. Now, what are the questions that may guide you along as we go on with our topic? First, what are the different types of computing devices? Second, how do you describe the earliest computing devices? And here is our question as your reflection. How do computers before and nowadays differ? Now let's proceed with our lesson. What is a computer? Well, computers are basically any form of electronic device that manipulates information or data. I you know you're already familiar with that. It's a device that can be instructed to carry out a sequence of arithmetic or logical operations automatically via computer programming. It can accept data from the user or what we call input, process, and store data entered as well as generate desired output result. Now let's proceed with the history of computer. Number one, Manual computational devices. Are you familiar with the pictures? We have here Abacus, Napier's Bones, and Slide Rule. This time, let us discuss each of them. We have the Abacus. Over 5,000 years ago, the abacus was used in Babylon 2,000 years before the Greeks used it to help with calculating. It was also used in Europe, China, and Russia, but its exact origin is still unknown. To use it, we slide the bids up and down on the rods to add and subtract. Have you used this before? Next, we have Napier's phone. John Napier, this man in the picture, invented logarithms, which use lookup tables to find the solution to otherwise tedious and error-prone mathematical calculations. Do you think he's saying? Next, Ottridge's slide rule. Though it appeared in various forms in Europe during the 17th century, the early form of slide rule was created in 1632 by the English mathematician William Ottridge. Slide rule consists of a movable ruler placed between two fixed and marked rulers. This is William Ottred and this is his slide rule. Now let's proceed with the history of computer. We have number two, 
manual mechanical calculators. Try to look at the pictures. Have you seen them before? We have the Pascaline calculator, Leibniz calculator, the weaving loom, difference engine, and analytical engine. Now let's go over them. Pascaline, this famous French philosopher and mathematician, Blaise Pascal, invented the first calculator in 1645 to help with collecting taxes. It could add and subtract by rotating diodes. We have Leibniz Calculator. Gottfried Wilhelm von Leibniz invented the machine in 1674, around 30 years after Pascal invented his machine. He called it the Stepped Reckoner, and it could not only add and subtract, but multiply and divide as well. Wow! We also have Jacquard's Weaving Loom. Joseph Marie Jacquard was a weaver. In 1804, got the bright idea of adapting the use of punch cards used in musical boxes to control his loops. His invention provided a model for the input and output of data in the electromechanical and electronic computing industry. This is Jacquard and his weaving room. Now we have the difference engine and analytical engine. 1830, Charles Babbage, an English mathematician, invented the difference engine that would solve certain equations. After the British government withdrew its financial support for his project, he later conceived the idea to invent the analytical engine, which he hoped would perform many kinds of calculations. His idea embodied the five key features of our modern computer today. An input device, a place for storage, processor, a control unit, and an output device. This invention earns him the title, Father of Computer. After Babbage death, his son was able to design and construct the analytical engine based on his model. Now this is the father of modern computer, Charles Babbage, his difference engine and analytical engine. Charles Babbage has a colleague in his work with the analytical engine. Her name is Augusta Ada Byron, a gifted mathematician who helped him develop the instructions for doing computations on it. She is a daughter of the English poet Lord Byron, and later become the Countess of Lovelace. Because of her close association with Babbage and her publications of notes about his work, she was named the first computer programmer. So our first computer programmer is a lady, Augusta Ada Byron. Now let's proceed with the history of computer. Now let's proceed with number three. Electromechanical computers, tolerant punched card machines. In the 1880s, Dr. Erman Hollery, a statistician with the U.S. Bureau of Consensus, completed a set of machines to help process the results of the 1890 census. Using 3 by 5 punched cards, he constructed an electromagnetic counting machine to sort and tabulate the data.
Now let's proceed with the history of computer. Number four, electronic computers. You get the pictures. Can you name each of them? We have the ABC, Mark One, Enyaq, Edvac, and Univac. Let us look at them. First, Athanasio Berry Computer, or ABC. An American professor, Dr. John Vincent Athanasio of the Iowa State College, and his graduating engineering student, Clifford Berry, began building the prototype of the first computing machine to use electricity and vacuum tubes, binary numbers, capacitors in a rotating drum, for memory elements and logical systems for computing. The result was ABC or Atnaso Berry Computer, the world's first automatic electronic digital computer. The John Vincent Atnaso and his colleague, his student, Clifford Berry with ABC. Next, we have Mark I. In 1940s, Harvard University professor Howard Hathaway Eichen invented the automatic general purpose calculator called Mark I in 1944, which in turn was financed by the International Business Machine or IBM. The official name of Mark I was automatic sequence control calculator. It was approximately 50 feet long and 8 feet high and consisted of some 700,000 moving parts and several hundred miles of wiring. Imagine how huge that computer is. Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer for Enya. John Moshley and John Crisper Urquhart invented the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer for Enya that was used in World War II to calculate trajectory tables for new guns. What you see on the left is Moshley and at the right is Eckert, and this is their computer, the Enya. Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer, or ELVAC. In 1946, Dr. John von Neumann, shown in the picture, a Hungarian-born mathematician, proposed a modified version of the Enya. He suggested the use of binary arithmetic in the operations of the computer, and then suggested the stored program concept. Dr. Newman developed the concept for the program and data resided in the same memory locations in the computer, and a system was used to differentiate instructions from data values. This proposal was later adopted by Princeton University, which developed EDVAC, or Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer. Universal Automatic Computer, or UNIVAC. When the World War II was over, Moshley and Eckert developed the UNIVAC I, the first general purpose commercial computer. This was used by the U.S. Census Bureau in 1951. Now let's proceed with the generations of computer. First generation. First generation computers used wired circuits containing several thousands of vacuum tubes. Its tube is about the size of a light bulb and used punched cards as the main storage medium 
and computer input. Sir John Ambrose Fleming was an English electrical engineer and physicist known primarily for inventing in 1904 the first vacuum tube. Second generation, the invention of transistors in 1947 paved the way for the development of the second generation computers. Transistors were smaller, more efficient, and consumed less energy. The second generation computers used magnetic core technology for primary memory. The three physicists who invented the transistors are John Barden on your left, William Shockley at the center, and Walter Bertain on your right. Third generation. Third generation computers used integrated circuits or ICs or chips. These computers were called mini computers and were compact, reliable, and less expensive. Keyboard and monitor were used to interact with the third generation computer instead of the punch cards and printouts. Jack Kelby, on your left, of Texas Instruments, and Robert Noyce, at the right, of Fairchild Semiconductor Incorporated, developed the first IC in 1958. Fourth generation. Fourth generation computers use a microprocessor wherein several computer functions are integrated. These computers are much smaller, faster, and more powerful than the earlier models. These computers are called microcomputers. And these computers are the computers that we are using now. Fifth generation. The fifth generation computers are based on artificial intelligence, or AI. They try to simulate the human way of thinking and reasoning. Artificial intelligence includes areas like expert system, natural language processing, speech recognition, voice recognition, robotics, and many others. That ends our lesson. Now, get your learning activity sheets and answer the activities including the reflection. Keep safe and God bless.